Hi, Mandy Pryor here, and welcome back to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Spotlight on Pittsburgh is a program about Pittsburgh's most fascinating people and what they do to make our city an amazing place to live and work. On this episode, we will be bringing you the lady of soul and blues, Miss Freddie Sover, as well as John Vento to talk to you a little bit about music, what's going on in the Pittsburgh area, and what's coming up for spring 2021, summer 2021. It's all around the corner on this episode of Spotlight on Pittsburgh. All right, welcome back to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Miss Freddie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for asking and having me. I'm just wonderful. It's just, yay. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited it's, we're excited to have you on the show. Um, so you are the lady of the blues, correct? Correct. And so tell me a little bit about what does that mean? I mean, does that mean you're, you're, you're crying, you're melancholy all the time, or does it mean you're bringing soul back into Pittsburgh? I'm actually keeping blues alive in Pittsburgh, so to speak. I was given that name years ago by uh, a young man that played guitar for me, Jason Caligiuri. Uh, he plays with uh, blues, Cosmic Blues Attack. And uh, he sometimes plays with Jimbo and the Soup Bone. And I don't know where he got that from. And that kind of stuck with me. And then my friend, Steve Nestor, he's from West Virginia. He passed away in 2017. He wrote a song about Lady the Blues. And if you listen to the song, um, it's about empowerment. It's about this person. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a woman, but it's about this person who has what they do in life. And it's like, you know, I can do it. I can take my shoes off. I can go all night, you know, whatever I have to do, you know, but I'm right there. And uh, Every time I go out of Pittsburgh when I was like on tour, people find out where I'm from and they're like, what does Pittsburgh know about blues? And I, and I laugh <laughs> and I said, really? I said, you know, we've had some great musicians internationally known who have dabbled in blues. And that's what it means to me, being the lady of the blues, the Pittsburgh lady of the blues, because I'm keeping blues alive and showing people outside of Pittsburgh that we do know blues. And so tell me a little bit about, um, you know, what you've done in the past. I know you have some new exciting stuff coming up, which we're going to get to, but tell me a little bit about your background and, and you know, what you've done in Pittsburgh in, as far as in the blues industry. Well, I've been doing this for 25 years and I started out in the blues music works band or BMW. Uh, my mentor was Big Al Levitt. He's passed away. He passed away in like 2006. And from there, I started doing my own thing. And I formed my first band, Blue Face, F-A-Z-E. And then I went on to form Miss Freddie's Blues Band and Miss Freddie's Home Quilting Band. And with those two bands, I've done a lot of charity work because my youngest child is on the autism spectrum. So I have donated time. I actually put together a charity event, my first time ever putting together an event. That was interesting. And it was at a place called Grazi's in Wexford. And I put that together to raise money for autism and awareness. And uh, from then I, you know, whenever people call me to do Toys for Tots in West Virginia or here in Pittsburgh or surrounding areas, I'm there, I use the music. And also for can breast cancer research and Relay for Life, the list is long, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, it, it's always nice and, and and I always feel very, very humble when people call me. Um, I feel a little guilty when they, in the middle of the sentence, I know you're busy, Miss Freddie. And I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is. I've got to rearrange. So in my head, I'm already rearranging my schedule as I'm having conversations with people. So, you know, that's what I do with my music. And there's a program called Music uh, Smiles headed by Annie Pugar, her and her husband had started it uh, years ago, but he had passed away of pancreatic cancer years and years ago. And so she keeps that up. And I've gone around hospitals 
My favorite is children's. I love going to children's hospital and performing. Those kids have so much fun and so do I, that it brings out the kid in me. And um, I used to do shows at the VA here in Pittsburgh. And that was very, very moving experience. And it had gotten to the point where they would ask me to do their memorial service they would have for veterans every year. And I did that with a couple musician friends and the uh, appreciation organ donor appreciation uh, they would have every year also with core. So, and did shows for the homeless vets. As I said, Mandy, the list is long. <laughs> well, you have an incredible following. You've been doing this a long time. And I think as, as somebody in, in the public eye, if you have that kind of following, you can really use it to do some really good stuff. So I'm glad to see you're participating in, in bringing awareness for different, uh, the autism spectrum and breast cancer, as well as working with the vets. You know, I, I my grandfather, he's in heaven, but he was a vet and he took it very seriously. Um, yeah. And so that's wonderful that you're doing outreach for them and doing stuff not only for, for all of these causes as, as much as it can be a little bit overwhelming, but also for yourself. So I hear you're working on your third album. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what that's gonna bring? I am excited to do that. It's a gospel and roots album. At first it was gonna be a blues album. And then for the last maybe like three or four years, um, I've been adding gospel to what I do when I do my live shows. And people have been asking me, well, when are you gonna do that gospel album? When are you gonna do it? And um, it started out with me doing Wade in the Water last year as a single. And that's under the um, MMM label, Mike Morgan out of Ohio. And um, he produced it. Jay Vernali and Kim Perrin out of Nashville put their spin on it and there it is. So it's going to be on my album. And I said, why can't I have both? So that's why it's going to be Gospel Roots and the name of it is going to be Glory B. And it's going to involve local musicians and probably some musicians in the tri-state area. So that's in the works. And I'm going to record at a studio in Lower Burrell. Um, it's going to be produced by Mike Sweeney. Hi, Mike. Uh, great bass player. He plays with Jimmy Adler and he's been writing a lot of my original material for several years now. So I'm excited about that. Oh. And um, what, what's the, what's your favorite song that you've ever sung? I mean, obviously you're a songwriter as well. So what's your favorite? Everybody has to have a favorite, Craig. Yes. My favorite favorite and it's an original it's lady of the blues because it shows that i can do rock which i have and my rock name by the way everyone is blue gemini <laughs> that's thanks to some friends that i sang with uh a long time ago and you know i love that song and you know god bless steve nestor he passed away in 2017 he wrote that um, song that's the title of my second album and I love doing it because it gets people moving, but it gets people thinking too. And I tell people, listen to the words because it's about empowerment. And it's about when you're down, you're still able to do things. When you're up, here I am. And I love songs, not only that are love songs, but I love exciting songs. I love songs that's like, okay, here I am, but it's not too much in your face. Yeah, I can say my favorite. You know, something, something you either feel deeply within or you can dance to, you feel the music or, you know, it's a beautiful day, especially in spring. I think we can all relate to how good it feels to just be warm and have windows down and have music. I mean, my car is my oasis. That's where I'm always uh, singing my own concerts with the wrong words. But, uh, you know, it's, I think it's fantastic that you, you find that in music and you're able to share it so well with all of your audience. And speaking of audiences, I know this summer you have a lot going on. So can you tell us a little bit about what we have to look forward to? Well, everybody can look forward to, I'm doing a lot of outdoor shows. Yay. Um, just go on my website, missfreddy.com and you'll see that. And it's exciting because I've actually emailed both fans and I said, I'm sending you some new music. And it's going to be really more originals because by now people are used to me singing. 
they're used to what I'm doing cover. So now I'm going to introduce more originals and it's just going to tell a story. Will I talk about what's been happening in the last year? No, I, I won't because we've been there and done that. What I want to do is let's do the now and let's look forward to what, you know, the future, what it's going to hold. So we're going to have fun. You know, it's, we're going to be welcoming. Yay. As always. And um, I'm going to be collaborating with other musicians and I'm working on a single right now. Yay. Being produced by Brian Cole. Hi, Brian. And uh, it'll be under the MTS management label. And I'm excited about that. And I can tell you it was written by Brett Michael. So oh boy. I'm, I'm, I'm putting my own spin on it. And uh, it's called Something to Believe in. I love that song. It is beautiful. Well, that's pretty impressive in itself right there. I mean, Brett yeah. Michael yeah. is Pittsburgh, isn't he? Yes, he is. And he's cute. I know he probably has a wife or girlfriend, but he's a nice looking guy. Okay. <laughs> I watched, what is it? Rock of Love? I forget what that was. Back in the day with him on it. Hysterical. Um, yeah. And so you have three, you have different shows coming up, or three albums, different shows coming up all summer. You seem really enthusiastic and busy. Is there anything else that you would like to share uh, that I haven't touched base on regarding what you're doing or a positive message that you could just send out there? My positive message, um, and it, it's wonderful. I wanna thank Michael Stover, MTS management, um, my PR manager. He's a great guy. I would recommend him to anyone. He is into gospel, country, blues, soul, and he represents a lot of artists, just not in Pittsburgh, but you know, outside of Pittsburgh nationally. And my message is, is a message of hope. And I just want everyone, you know, yeah, we hear hang in there, you know, it'll be all right. And sometimes, you know, you, you just can't say that. We, we know that. So my message is, you know, it's okay to be upset, to cry. I do it. Why can't you do it? But it's also okay to lean on someone else. It's okay if someone wants to lean on you. It is quite all right, you know, if you have a faith, no matter what your faith is, you know, reach out, reach out to your faith. If you don't have a faith, reach out, just think you are important. You are very important and it is about you, you know, but you're not being selfish about it. And, you know, with the music that I'm about to share with the world, you know, these next several months, I, I just want everyone to listen and to pay attention and you know to say three four 50 years from now hey remember that song miss freddie did you know i gotta go back and listen to it and i'm hoping my european tour was canceled last year because of COVID. so i'm hoping in 2020 to go over europe and i'm excited about that and to tour several different countries you know in a month's time or however long it takes so i'll carry your luggage for you <laughs> I'll come along. I already have people. I'll be your guitar player. I'm like, oh, they already put a band together. They're just waiting for me to, you know, come over there. I'm sorry. I said, but you never know. Something may happen that, you know, I could take people over there at a time. So I'm excited about that. And I'm doing more and more collaboration with local musicians and uh, musicians out of West Virginia and Ohio. So those are my exciting things that I'm doing. And, and I'm very happy. And I'm still doing charity work. I absolutely love it. Doing that Pink Day in Leechburg, uh, September 18th. Um, they raise money and awareness for the Breast Cancer uh, Foundation. So make sure you guys check that out. We will. And as you continue to put out albums, have shows, please make sure you keep me updated so I can keep our attendee or guests uh, updated on what you're up to, as well as when your album comes out. I'm excited for it. I'll definitely pick up my own copy. And um, thank you so much for being on today. It was a wonder, it was such a pleasure. And as always, we look forward to what you're bringing to the blues industry and gospel industry in Pittsburgh. I think you do a phenomenal job. Well, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone out there and to both of my bands. I appreciate you all and all the DJs and everyone, the fans, my family, 
Um, much love to you. And as I always say, I'm sending mad sassy love to everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Freddie. You're welcome. Thank you, Mandy. and welcome back to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. We are with John Vento. John, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Hey, Mandy. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No problem. Freddie Stover told me all about you. Uh -oh. And um, I just wanted to find out more. She talked very highly of what you've done. And I know that you've done some projects at Moondogs. As I'm sure you'll let me know a few other across mm -hmm. the Pittsburgh region and bringing great music and um you know, doing things for charity as well, which is always great. If you can, if you can make a difference with a charity while you're doing what you love, that's like the best thing you could possibly yeah. do, right? Yep. Agreed. So let's get started a little bit. Um, tell me about your history. Tell me your background and, and kind of what led you to where you are today. Well, I'm, a, I'm a, a Pittsburgh person, you know, born and raised, even though I left for a little bit to, uh, at a young age, uh, travel the country extensively from 1979 to 1983. So that was, that was really a great experience. Um, from, from the music and charity standpoint, I really kind of was a late bloomer and got involved with things heavily in the, in the mid uh, 90s with uh, a band I was part of called The Businessmen. The joke was we started with strictly charitable concerts so nobody would criticize us because we weren't that good. <laughs> so, you know, if you're, if you're playing up there for free and you're raising money for a wonderful charity, who in hell is gonna, you know, have a problem with that? So that's how we got started. And through that, through the businessmen, I've met so many wonderful musicians and tried to grow with, with the craft, tried to grow by learning from better players, better singers, better writers, and just, and uh, here we are all these years later, and uh, it, it all is tied together pretty beautifully. Um, I think culminated with our organization, Band Together Pittsburgh, where we create music programs for folks on the autism spectrum. That, that's my pride and joy, uh, the organization that we have. And um, you do that, you've done that with Ron Moondog mm -hmm. Esser, correct? Um, yeah. So yeah. you right. have an open mic for, for children with autism, mm -hmm. or adults with autism too, I would Yeah, imagine. anybody. And um, that's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's a great venue down there. I don't know if you know about me, but I have actually stepped in to do their, their um, hosting for their cat auction. They don't auction cats. It's more to raise oh. money for cats. So I did that yeah. uh, must have been five to six years ago. So I know Moondogs is a great place in oh, yeah. Lawn yeah. and they do. Uh, it's hilarious, by the way. It's so yeah. funny. Um, I know they do a lot of stuff for charity too. So it's great that yep. you've been in there too. I mean, what a wonderful establishment. Yeah, Moon and I started the organization, but we're, we're just a small part of it. We have a great board, so many families and parents and young people that are on the autism spectrum. It's really been, God has blessed us. It, it has truly been an amazing experience. Wonderful. So and yeah. so aside from Moondogs, you also have mm -hmm. your own venue, correct? Yeah, I have a little uh, acoustic listening room, community listening room called Steamworks Creative. Again, it isn't me. We have an all-volunteer staff. Uh, there's nobody on payroll. Uh, it's a 50-seat venue on Route 8 in Gibsonia. And um, as a matter of fact, we're doing this interview. Jim Cren's going to be with us this weekend, a comedy show. We have Shirley Ann Hawk tomorrow night doing a singer-songwriter uh, session. So it's, it's really, of co course, through COVID, it's been... Uh, like every venue, it's been a challenge, but we're still here, we're still paying the rent somehow. And when did that open? That opened three years ago, um, quite accidentally. It was just an empty space on Route 8. And uh, I came up with an idea to throw in some tables and chairs and invite some musicians, singer songwriter types, you know, acoustic guitar. And, and um, it just took off. There's, a, there's an audience that wants to sit and listen and not be at a loud bar with television sets and people clanging glasses. And that's what Steamworks Creative is, uh, a true listening room. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I'm there and folks are talking during the performance, I, 
I politely stop the show and remind them that at our place, uh, you must be quiet during the performance. That's wonderful. I mean, it's all mm -hmm. about the music then. So yep. what made you get into music? I mean, what's your, what my, was your my, history? Uh, well, like a lot of people, I just loved it. My mother's family uh, were either musicians, professional musicians, or professional gamblers. Uh, and there was nothing in between. So, you know, I, I kind of grew up on it and just always loved music. And then over the past 15, 20 years, I've been so blessed to be mentored and supported by some great, great players. You know, people you would know, like Kenny Blake and David Granati and my dear friend, Buddy Hall. And, and there's so many. But, you know, these are guys I looked up to. And uh, they they help guide me and give me some really tremendous um Tremendous, tremendous input and support and support. You know, they didn't laugh at me when I came up with ideas. Um, so it's it's been really great. And uh, you have, you know, you've had albums come out. You have a new one coming out. Let's let's talk about uh, what the inspiration was behind your Love, Lust, and Other Wreckage 2019 mm. album that came out. Yeah, that, that was very autobiographical. So here I am in my 50s with uh, multiple... Uh, failed relationships through my own fault uh, and selfishness. And uh, I, had, I had been diagnosed with uh, kidney cancer. And it was, you know, like anything else, it kind of rocks your world. And it gave me a chance to look in the mirror and explore um, things that I had done right, things I'd done wrong. And I collaborated with my good friend, Bert Lobel, who's, who's a great lyricist. And, and David Granati produced the record and played on most of it. And it, it, uh, it's really uh, 13 tracks of, uh, of a love story uh, with lots of failures, but with success in the end. Uh, and then we turned that album into a stage play, which we performed in the fall of 2019 at the Oaks Theater. And we hope to run the play again once you know things get back to normal so that was it was very personal that album is really really personal i mean i i definitely think it takes a big life shock to make you sit back look at everything and then rebuild even better than you were before so yep. how can they get a hold of the 2019 album well everything is on johnvento.com so it's uh, john v-e-n-t-o.com including information on my band, the Needs Hotel Band, which um, is more of a performing entity. The stuff I do on my own is just strictly studio recordings and a variety of those kind of things. And uh, you have another album coming out. So can you tell me mm -hmm. a little bit about that and yeah. what you're working on? Yeah, it's called Brick by Brick and it's in process as the title kind of uh, demonstrates. I started releasing songs on November 1st of, of last year, 2020. So every month, the first of every month, I release a new single and there's no continuity. There's no theme to it. Stylistically, each track is very different. I use different collaborators and uh, either I'm gonna run out of uh, energy or run out of ideas. And when I get to the end, which will probably be next year at this time, 13 or 14 months into it, uh, then it'll be a completed album. But at this point, it's being built. Uh, we're coming up on month six. And uh, of course, that's on johnvento.com also. Well, it's so. good. I mean, the best stuff comes when you take your time, no rushing, and then yeah. hopefully it will be a masterpiece. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> we're trying. And, and so what, <laughs> what about your band? Where do you guys perform? How can oh, people yeah. find out more about your band? Yeah, the Needs Hotel Band. We're named after the famous Pittsburgh Tavern, Needs Hotel, and that's N-I-E-D-S. Um, and, you know, we have a full-blown website, needshotelband.com, and uh, we have a big summer schedule coming up, all outdoor shows. So we're all over the place, um, playing with a bunch of other great bands, and, and uh, we have some terrific opening acts. But um, I think the most special thing we've done in the past few years, we rented the Cary Furnace, the abandoned steel mill down in Braddock, Swiss Bell. And we brought in a film crew and a recording crew. And it's going to be about a one hour documentary, probably released this summer of a tour of the facility. Um, we took the curator on a tour of the steel mill and then we performed a concert inside. So uh, wow. it's a great band, the Needs Hotel band. These, these cats are, they're, they're strong. I mean, I'm lucky to be part of it. I'm 
really honored to, to be uh, involved with it. So, well, then, I mean, nothing feels more Pittsburgh than going in an abandoned steel, steel yes. mill, taking a tour, having a band in there. Oh, uh, right. That sounds great. And, and I hope, I hope you'll share it with me so I can share it out there whenever oh, it comes yeah. out, because that sounds phenomenal. Yep. All right. Well, unless there's anything else that you would like to share that I forgot to tell the audience, please do. Please feel free to open up about anything, um, how they can get in touch. You said your website. We'll make sure that we have the link up there yeah. as well. Yeah, and no, I think you did a fantastic job of covering a bunch of points within 10 minutes. I like the way <laughs> you operate. window. <laughs> I like it. So no, I think it's very cool what you do. And I want to thank you for supporting uh, people in the Pittsburgh community and uh, adding your beautiful spirit and energy to this thing. So thanks. You are more than welcome. And thanks for adding your music and spirit to Pittsburgh because, you know, we have to keep some music in this COVID right now and keep oh, yeah. the spirits up. So I hear things are opening up. Let's hopefully, hopefully that goes forward. Yeah, let's keep that one in our, that's in a prayerful way. So thank you. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. All right, you too. And thank you so much to Freddie Stover and John Vento for joining me on this episode of Spotlight on Pittsburgh. We are thrilled to see what's gonna be coming up in the music industry of summer 2021. If you'd like to follow Spotlight on Pittsburgh, we are on Instagram, we're on Facebook, Vimeo and YouTube, as well as on Pittsburgh Community TV, as well as Peters Township Community TV. So plenty of chances to check out the show and watch as we shine the spotlight on two new guests. Mandy Pryor, Spotlight on Pittsburgh.